Records will be broken, bodies pushed to their limits, and legends created as 12 teams battle to win the longest ocean race on the planet. This is the Clipper Round the World Yacht Race. The Clipper Round the World Yacht Race is a 40,000 mile, 11 month adventure, crossing the world's most challenging oceans. One that will test the physical and mental boundaries of everyone involved. But these are all amateur sailors, ordinary people, many of whom have never sailed before. Now, they're stepping into race mode, determined not only to survive all and live this experience to the full, but to reach the end as race winners. There is a series of 16 races around the world. Starting in England, the first leg across the Atlantic Ocean sees a short sprint to France for race one, before a downwind race two roller coaster to Brazil. Race three will take the fleet to South Africa, and then it's the terrifying Southern Ocean sleigh ride down into the infamous Roaring Forties to Albany. The Australia leg is split into three stages, including the iconic Sydney to Hobart race, before heading north to Singapore and on to China. Then the longest single race, crossing the mighty Pacific Ocean to San Francisco. The next leg around the US in three races heads south, through the Panama Canal, into the Caribbean to Jamaica, and up to New York. The final leg is a further three races, across the Atlantic Ocean to Northern Ireland, on to the Netherlands, before race 16 to the finish back in London. This is the ninth time the race has been staged over the past 15 years. It was created by Sir Robin Knox Johnson, who was the first man to sail single-handed, non-stop around the world on his now famous yacht, Sue Haley, back in 1968. You can trace the origins of Clipper back to, I was in Greenland with Chris Bonington with the climbing, and he was telling me how much it costs to climb Mount Everest. And I thought, well, what's the sailing equivalent? It has to be a circumnavigation must be lots of people out there, just as you hire a guide to go up Mount Everest, who would like to sail around the world and achieve the ultimate, but don't have enough money for a boat or don't have enough confidence in their boating ability if they do have one. So we put an advert in the paper and got 8,000 responses. So we thought, well, I enjoy seeing the crews come to us. 40% never been on a boat before. And we train them up. And Training these people up and watching them change, watching their confidence grow. I want to hear you say at the end, that's the best thing I've done with my life. And then I want to hear them say, so far, because then I know I've changed their lives. A brand new fleet of 12 yachts has been built for this race, the third generation of Clipper Ocean Racers. These are 70 feet long, designed by renowned naval architect Tony Castro and built to be faster and more agile than the previous fleets. With twin helms, twin rudders and a bowsprit, surfing speeds of over 30 knots are expected in the right conditions. The hull lines are quite a lot different, so that's going to provide a more exciting or responsive racing. Uh, the twin rudders are going to make sure that, uh, that they're able to, to deal with the extra speeds they're going to have and that the surfing speeds are going to be going through when they're crossing the oceans. And moving to the asymmetric spinnaker, and the, the twin coffee grinders to allow them to, to work that properly is, is going to make it a very, very exciting ride. Each yacht has a professional skipper who's experienced in working with novice sailors. As remarkably, almost half of the 670 people taking part have never sailed before. There's an intensive training course that everyone undergoes. The, the training the crew receive before they do the race is absolutely vital. Um, everyone gets three weeks of training and uh, it's a really, really intensive time. Uh, it serves a couple of purposes though. Uh, firstly, it's designed to uh, try and uh, recreate almost the, uh, as, as close as we can to the environment that the crew will be facing on board the boat. So they're living in close quarters and uh, with other crew members uh, to see whether that kind of uh, part of the adventure appeals as well. Um, the second part as well is really just to get them um, started from the basics up. Uh, big boat sailing is very different to any small boat sailing or yacht sailing they might have done to date. It's very different processes and a lot of safety that needs to be covered in that time. So, so we take everyone back to scratch and build them up from there. So level one, uh, level two and level three are, are usually spread out throughout the, the, the year or two leading up to the race. Level two, uh, we start introducing racing. 
and performance and team teamwork for, for performance sailing. The selection process for Clipper is very rigorous, so by the time the crew have got through to training, uh, they, they, they do have a really good idea of what the race entails and, and quite how tough the conditions on board can be. Some of the 12 professional skippers selected for this enormous undertaking and responsibility have completed the race before, while others join for the first time. Oli Cottrell takes the helm of one DLL for his first clipper race. Born in Bermuda, he has been sailing and racing all of his life. The only female skipper on the team, Vicky Ellis, has an impressive race record and is sure to be highly competitive on Switzerland. Joining the Qingdao yacht, Gareth Glover returns to the Clipper race track, having achieved an impressive four podium finishes last time. So too does Jan Reard aboard Teve Garmin, having led a team to a podium finish in the 2009-2010 edition. Rich Gould is no stranger to the race as he helped train crews for an earlier edition, but now joins as skipper of Invest Africa. Canada's Eric Holden is a meteorologist and helped the national selling team at the London Olympics. That knowledge and expertise could pay dividends for Henry Lloyd's crew. Australia's Chris Hollis is used to racing at top international levels and joins the PSP Logistics yachts with high expectations. In Irishman Sean McCarter, the crew of Derry London Derry Durra have a perfect match with a skipper that has followed major yacht races all his life. The youngest skipper in the fleet is the skipper of Mission Performance, but Matt Mitchell is undaunted with an impressive race record. However, this is Pete Sterling's second time at the helm of Jamaica Get All Right, setting his sights on a top three finish after narrowly missing out before. And joining for his first clipper race is Simon Talbot, who is looking forward to skippering the Great Britain yacht to victory. The only Dutch skipper, Patrick, began sailing as a child and has been racing all his life and is excited at the prospect of leading the old Pulteney team around the world. After months of preparation, the whole fleet gathers at St Catherine Docks in London, ready for the race start and spirits are high. Everywhere you look, it's clipper, clipper, clipper. People drinking, people cheering us in. A little bit of stress for the skippers pulling us in here. But as all the boats are arriving, you can just feel the excitement. feel very inspired, excited. Um, I don't think I will become a professional sailor, but uh, I'm definitely uh, telling friends and family that it's something they could do and they should do. Um, kind of nervous and anxious and excited all at the same time, you know. Uh, you just want to get going. And after years of waiting and planning, for most, it really is time to say final farewells before the dock out party begins. starting to become overwhelming. Uh, it all hit me last night and uh, I had a dip and now it's soaring back up again. We're lucky enough to be one of the four boats that will be going through Tower Bridge. Um, so it'll be very, I mean, I'll never do that again probably in my life. So all the crew are really excited about it, including myself. For most, it's a moment to savour, with four Clipper yachts selected to parade under Tower Bridge for the first time in Clipper race history led appropriately by Team Great Britain and local London skipper Simon Talbot. To take the Great Britain yacht through Tower Bridge with the crowds amassed like that, I cannot tell you for a London boy like me how emotional that makes me feel. It's absolutely fantastic. I think the crew are loving it. It's our red carpet moment. I think we need to lap up every minute of it. It's fantastic. Wow, what a great start. Having paraded down the Thames to the coast, by the next morning all ceremonies were left behind as the teams focused on the first of 16 races and the start of this epic adventure across 40,000 miles in the world's longest ocean race around the planet. With all the tension and excitement brimming over, the final few seconds tick away. And with that, the adventure begins. Great Britain crosses the line first, but this is a marathon, not a sprint. 
This is the start of their big adventure. That's their first start of this great odyssey they're on. And wow, what a great start they've had too. What impressed me was the fact that an awful lot of them set their asymmetric spinnakers immediately. Now they haven't set them before, so that was a big first and I thought, good, well done. That's first place, you know, they're, they're up for it. And I uh, thought the crews are gonna be loving this.